Rapper, producer, and fashion designer Kanye Omari West, now known as Gay, was born on June the 8th of 1977 in Atlanta, Georgia. His father, Ray, was a Black Panther and a photojournalist for the Atlanta Journal newspaper. His mother, Donda, was an English professor at Chicago State University, and after his parents divorced at the age of three, Kanye lived with his mom, Donda, mostly. At 10 years old, he moved with his mom to China for one year, and his mom taught English at a university there. Once they returned back to America, Kanye became more infatuated with Chicago's Southside hip-hop scene and producer No ID became his mentor. Kanye later graduated from Polaris School for Individual Education and received the scholarship to attend Chicago's American Academy of Art. He would eventually drop out of college to pursue music and his first album would also be titled The College Dropout. He became a producer for local artist and his sampling style was deemed chipmunk soul because of the mixture of pitch soul and R&B vocals. In 2001, he moved to New York to further pursue his musical dreams and rapper Jay-Z gave him his big break. He produced This Can't Be Life for Jay-Z's album Dynasty, Rock La Familia, and four songs on Jay-Z's album The Blueprint. Kanye's career took off. He was able to work with the likes of Moss Def, Alicia Keys, Beyonce, but Kanye wanted more. He wanted to be a star, but unfortunately, Rockefeller Records and other labels did not believe in his dream as a rapper. Because Rockefeller did not want to lose Kanye as a producer, Damon Dash decided to sign him. In 2002, he was involved in a terrible accident and his jaw had to be wired shut. He made the song title Through the Wire to describe the incident and continue to work on his debut album. Unfortunately, his album was leaked, but he was able to revise the album prior to its release and basically rework everything. In February of 2004, his album The College Dropout was released after several delays. It peaked at number two on billboards. Kanye would go on to receive 10 Grammy nominations and won Best Rap Song for Jesus Walks and Best Rap Album. Kanye had broken the stereotypical gangster rap mode and he was officially a star. The only thing that I prayed is that my feet don't fail me now Jesus, And I don't think it's nothing I can do now to right my wrongs Jesus, I want to talk to God, I ain't afraid Soon after, he founded his own record label, Good Music, and signed artists like Common and John Legend. His second album, Late Registration, was equally a hit with three Grammy wins for Best Rap Album, Song, and Solo Performance for Songs, Diamonds from Sierra Leone and Go Digger. The album debuted at number one on billboards. In September the following year, 2005, after Hurricane Katrina damaged the city of New Orleans, and displaced so many people, Kanye made an appearance on NBC to raise funds for the victims of Hurricane Katrina. This is where he made the infamous statement that George Bush doesn't care about black people. The destruction of the spirit of the people of southern Louisiana and Mississippi may end up being the most tragic loss of all. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Please call in the past few days because the president did not visit new orleans immediately after the hurricane hit bush went on to say kanye's statement was a disgusting moment i will say that that moment was a little bit odd and a little bit thrown off as we can see because even the guy standing next to kanye was a little bit thrown off by that statement you know like okay kanye after his tour with youtube from 2005 to 2006, Kanye's next album, Graduation, was inspired by both rock and roll and Chicago house music. Graduation was released the same day as 50 Cent's Curtis album on September the 11th of 2007, and spectators deemed it to be the battle of hip-hop soul. Kanye's album sold over 957,000 copies in six days and landed the number one spot to beat out 50 Cent. Kanye's song, Can't Tell Me Nothing, 
nothing went viral on YouTube with the help of comedian Zach G, who Kanye hired to lip sync the lyrics. In late 2007, Kanye's mother Donda, who had become his manager, passed away suddenly from a heart attack after getting cosmetic surgery. But in 2022, Kanye told us that she was sacrificed for his fame, which was kind of weird. And it just felt like Hollywood strikes again. And is Kanye saying too much? Is he the next one to go down? It makes you wonder, like, is sacrificing in Hollywood real? And the more I talk about these celebrities, I've realized that Holly Weird is really a demonic and dangerous. And if you're not careful, you're not only going to sell your soul, you're going to sell everything, okay? And basically be left with nothing at the end of the day. Kanye did dedicate a song called Hey Mama to her during the performance. And he also broke up with his longtime fiance, Alexis Pfeiffer, during this time because he was grieving a lot and he was really sad about his mom passing away suddenly. He released his next album, 808s and Heartbreak, and stopped rapping for a while because he stated that hip hop was over for him after his mom's death. Although Kanye was grieving and was using auto tune to sing, it did not stop the nominations, it did not stop the wins slash awards from coming in for him. He still won two Grammys for Estelle's American Boy and T.I.'s Swagger Like Us. In 2009 at the MTV VMA Awards, where Taylor Swift won the Best Female Video Award, Kanye swiftly got on stage, no pun intended, while Taylor was making her speech to tell the audience that Beyonce should have won instead. So thank you so much for giving me a chance to win a VMA Award. I Yo, Taylor, I, I'm really happy for you. I'm going to let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. And I just felt like Beyonce was so fake in that moment. Like her facial expression. It's like, girl, bye. <laughs> but maybe she didn't really expect him to say it but i just felt like it was just so fake let's just say it was an awkward and embarrassing moment to say the least and we later found out from kanye west's ex-girlfriend amber rose that he was drunk that night which i'm inclined to believe because he had a bottle of henny right by his side on the red carpet and as we all know brown liquor is the most dangerous okay kanye did later apologize to taylor but then took it back which it was kind of odd he just switches back and forth with taylor i'm not sure and in 2016 he made a song called famous and mentioned taylor saying he basically made her famous which low key kanye did put a spotlight on taylor's career because let's be honest i'm not really impressed by taylor swift's music but that's just my opinion but during the grammys taylor made sure to let women know that they shouldn't get sidetracked by people who want to undercut and take credit for for their accomplishments and i'm like you go girl you go girl don't let kanye do it to you during this time kanye always had his eyes on fashion because as we all know music you know it flip flops it might not take you far so do something else on the side to make more money and it's been reported that kanye actually interned at gap at one point and fendi to gain some experience for fashion and the things he wanted to do he decided to juggle both music and fashion and in 20 2011 launched his collection in Paris, which received less than stellar reviews. And in 2012, the reviews were no better. And so he decided to basically pack up shop and announced that his collection would no longer be showing. And let's make reference to that sway in the morning clip where Kanye went off. Kanye said, you don't have the answers. You don't have the answer sway because sway was telling him, you know, take a step back. But Kanye said, no, you ain't got the answers sweat you ain't got the answers let's move on who has the answers guys you guys tell me who has the answers or why don't you empower yourself and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself How, take, take a few steps back 
to go. You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers, Sway. In 2013, he signed a 10 million deal with Adidas and collabed with French label APC. And Yeezy Season 1 was launched officially and received mixed reviews, which is better than bad reviews, I guess. It's the step up, can only go up from there. Kanye was able to build the Yeezy brand and would eventually become a billionaire. So look at God, he kept working on it, working on it, and eventually now he's a billionaire because he kept working on his brand. Back to the music. In 2010, he released his fifth album called My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, which produced the hit single Monster. And some people say this album was actually Kanye's best album, but you know, something about Kanye's first two albums, it just hits different for me. In 2011, Kanye and Jay-Z would link up to produce the album Watch the Throne. In 2012, he released another album called Cruel Summers to bring the spotlight to the artist on his label, Good Music. During this time, we saw Kanye make an appearance on Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and we found out that him and Kim were dating each other. But as we all know now, Kim has been messing with Kanye prior to that, and we know this because of Amber Rose. We found out that Kim was out here laying it low and spreading it wide for Kanye prior to the whole keeping up with the Kardashians hot mess okay but you know I digress the pair would eventually get married in 2014 right after her infamous divorce from former basketball player Chris Humphries in 2013 Kanye and Kim have four children together they're so cute and in 2021 Kim filed for divorce after Kanye's numerous Twitter rants about her and the Kardashian family them living apart his mental health struggles with bipolar disorder my goodness kim really went through it with kanye i do feel bad for him you know at some point i just did find it odd that they were living apart he was in wyoming doing his own thing producing music while she was in la to me i don't even know why the two linked up because let's be honest kim is never leaving la let me say that again kim kardashian is never leaving la she is literally an attention seeker she wants to be in the spotlight she needs to be seeing Kanye so I don't understand how they even like thought that would work but you know that's none of my business during the divorce Kanye and Kim's then boyfriend Pete Davidson were constantly going back and forth Kanye nicknamed Pete Skeet which was quite awkward and released the disturbing video titled easy and Pete at this point tattooed Kanye and Kim's kids name on his body which was strange weird disturbing you've only really dated this lady for a few months and you're already tattooing her kids names on your body like a weirdo like if I was Kanye I would have been looking at him side eye but you know Kim she's just ugh, anything for attention call me abuser when I was trying to get that heroin addict away from my kids that was tattooing my kids names on them Ski uh, uh, Pete Davidson in 2022, the divorce was officially finalized, and as of January 2023, less than two months after his divorce was finalized, Kanye married Yeezy designer Bianca Sensori, which made me give Kanye a side eye, like, was she a side chick? I don't know, allegedly. Where did she come from just two months after the divorce? But you know, they were separated prior to that, but it's just kind of like, that was a little quick to be moving on that fast, but you know, it is what it is. Now back to the music. In June 2013, Kanye released his sixth studio album called Yeezus and many people claimed he sounded paranoid and out of touch. Also, they did not like the Jesus and God comparisons because you guys know Kanye thinks he's the smartest person in the room and you know, he does too much at times. In September of that year, Kanye got into a Twitter feud with Jimmy Kimmel because he made fun of Kanye's most famous quotes you Using child actors. The two were able to patch up their differences when Kanye did make an appearance on the Jimmy Kimmel live show, which was good. In 2015, Kanye became the only rapper to collab with Paul McCartney for the song Four Five Seconds with singer Rihanna. Once again, during the Grammys this time, Kanye acted like he was going to interrupt Beck's speech for Best Album Award. However, after the show, he did say that Beck should have given given his
his award to Beyonce, but later retracted once he found out Beck plays approximately 12 musical instruments. Beck needs more Grammys just due to the fact of how many instruments and you know what he produces. Like Beyonce could never, and that's no shade. That's no shade. I'm just being honest. In 2015, Kanye was named co-owner of the streaming service title. During this time, Kanye had a little hiccup with the public, and despite having a petition signed by 137,000 people to be removed from the lineup, Kanye still went on to headline Glastonbury Festival in the UK. The petition called Kanye lyrically appalling, but let's be honest, Kanye's music is the least of our worries, okay? Because I've definitely heard worse, okay? Lyrically appalling? That's not what I would describe Kanye as. Like, come on, let's just be honest. Those people were doing way too much. In 2016, prior to the release of his seventh studio album, The Life of Pablo, he went through a series of episodes, you know, you guys remember that Twitter rant where he talked about Wiz Khalifa, you know, saying that Wiz allegedly critique him and Amber Rose shut it down with the whole booty comment. I'll insert the clip if I can find it. Like that episode was strange and he deleted all his tweets once Amber clapped back for coming at her husband Wiz Khalifa and coming at her child essentially. So Kanye was doing too much. He also dissed Michael Jordan but then later apologized and then he claimed he was 53 million dollars in debt and needed Mark Zuckerberg to basically invest one billion dollars into his ideas and also stated that Bill Cosby was innocent like Kanye was going through a whole lot in 2016 and that's due to what we know now. The album still however debuted at number one on Billboard so this erratic genius just keeps getting better and better okay he keeps winning and people keep buying his stuff okay in late 2016 Kanye went on another series of rants about radio playlists he talked about Beyonce he talked about Jay-Z he talked about Barack Obama Donald Trump and it just seemed like he was having a mental breakdown during his Saint Pablo tour okay on November the 21st of 2016 following his Sacramento rant he canceled the remaining 21 dates of his tour and stated it was due to exhaustion he spent eight days at the UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles to get better. In 2018, we witnessed Kanye's public support of President Donald Trump. During a TMZ interview, he let the public know that he was addicted to opioids after getting liposuction and that slavery in the U.S. was a choice. You hear about slavery for 400 years? For 400 years? That sounds like a choice. <laughs> like, you was there for 400 years and it's all of y'all? You know, like... It's like we're we're mentally in prison. Which caused obvious public outrage. Like sometimes I think Kanye says stuff thinking that he sounds smart and you know eloquent. Like that's something you think in your head, not something you say out loud. I get what Kanye was trying to say with that statement. Like you outnumber the white people by so many numbers. Why not just run over them? But we've seen throughout history like certain places where there was like massacres of the slaves actually going against the masters and pretty much overtaking them but eventually the whites would call in more backup and because they had like weapons they would basically enslave people back again i understand where he was going to but it's like that's not something you say like out loud like kanye <sighs> Just be quiet sometimes. On June the 1st of 2018, the rapper's A Studio album, Yay, was released with only seven tracks and debuted at number one, which matches the record held by The Beatles and Eminem. He also publicly revealed that he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, which a lot of people alluded to because of his erratic and sporadic situations that he's had throughout the years, quote unquote. In 2019, he debuted his Sunday service sessions, which essentially converted his music to gospel versions. <laughs> We 
we saw Kanye be more religious. He started wearing clothes that, you know, were just nude. You know, kind of like during the Hebrew times, I guess. And during this time, he wanted even Kim to follow suit and cover up. But Kim wasn't having that because as we all know, Kim is an attention seeker. So I don't know what he thought. He really thought Kim was about to be out there looking homeless. I'm sorry, it's never gonna happen. Like she said, he created a monster and he had to deal with her, okay? He also performed at Coachella for Easter Sunday, which was nice. He was supposed to release another album titled Yandi in 2018, but it was pushed back and never released. Kanye has gone on to release a series of Sunday services like Jesus is King, Jesus is Born, and operas like Nebuchadnezzar and Mary. In 2019, his ninth studio album, Jesus is King, was released and soon followed by Jesus is Born. And in 2020, Kanye tweeted that he was running for president and held his first rally in Charleston, Carolina, where he talked about Planned Parenthood, marijuana, slavery, and other things. And here we saw the Kanye uh, breakdown, I, I, I think it was, where he basically said, I almost killed my daughter. Like, yeah, that rally was something to behold, okay? <laughs> He would eventually concede and will probably run for president again in 2024. So you guys hold your breath and pray to God that Kanye doesn't win because America will go straight to ish. <laughs> Oh my God, they just letting anybody run these days. You guys can run for president if you want to. <laughs> In 2021, the album Donda, named after his mother, was released, which debuted at number one on Billboard's and tied Eminem's record for 10th consecutive album debut. He also released a demo album called Donda 2 that was released through a stem player, but it was not eligible for entry on Billboard's. The album allegedly made over $2 million, but Kanye claims to not have made any money from the album. He was also sued over the song Flower that was a sample of Jefferson's Move Your Body on the album. In 2022, Kanye had several run-ins with the paparazzi and people recording him. As we all know, he doesn't like to be recorded by random people. He doesn't like people waiting outside for him, trying to take pictures of him. He has been known to snatch people. I mean, snatch people's equipment. And yeah, I don't even know why people still try to record him secretly because he's not having that nonsense. The man wants to be left alone, just like him live his life but you know he chose to be a celebrity and this is what he has to deal with. Kanye and Candace Owens were also spotted at Paris Fashion Week wearing White Lives Matter t-shirts and that sparked major public backlash for the obvious reasons you know Black Lives Matter now you want to wear White Lives Matter t-shirts Kanye but you know he explained it. I understood where he was coming from obviously but sometimes I think Kanye does stuff for shock value and just to be seen as well. He's an attention seeker too, but just in a different way, in my honest opinion. During an episode of Drink Champs, he was making anti-Semitic comments about the Jewish community. Used to getting screwed by the Jewish media. Mm. And I'm saying, y'all done poked the bear too f long. And soon after, both Adidas and Balenciaga severed ties with him. And thank God Balenciaga severed ties with him, knowing what we know now about them. Like, who wants to be tied with that? Disgusting. Some of what Kanye said was correct, but you know we live in a politically correct world where your opinion truly doesn't matter. Either you fall in line or you'll be labeled crazy. I do think Kanye is crazy in some ways, but I think the guy makes sense in some other ways if you actually like listen to what he's saying and not be quick to come into the defense quote unquote you know just listen to what he says and you could probably grab one or two things that make sense in 2023 adidas did sign kanye west back due to beyonce's ivy park losing over 200 million dollars for beyonce first it was darion now it's ivy park like uh-uh it ain't making no sense 
something and adding up who's wearing her clothes let me know put a one in the chat it's like no <laughs> and yeezy as a brand is set to lose over one billion dollars which is quite quite strange you know i want to feel bad for adidas and balenciaga but i don't because at the end of the day you guys were quick to jump on the bandwagon to cancel somebody at the end of the day it didn't work out because people will actually f with kanye and people actually like kanye for some reason and the guy is smart now all of a sudden you want to hop back on the bandwagon so it was money over everything for adidas and it's just like the genius known as kanye west keeps outsmarting everybody and for balenciaga i just need y'all to take y'all advertisements and symbolisms and go straight to hell because you guys are weirdos and just strange and demonic if you ask me kanye's catalog alone speaks for itself the man is talented he's versatile and he's innovative a lot of people deem him to be crazy but he's actually a very intelligent person that has a medical imbalance and unfortunately for us he knows he's a genius and no one can stop him i am the number one most impactful artist of our generation i am shakespeare in the flesh walt disney nike google now, who's going to be the Medici family and stand up and let me create more? Or do you want to marginalize me till I'm out of my moment? I'm not going to say it's not a way not to fail. But hopefully with God's blessings, there shouldn't be no way for me to lose, really. <laughs>